Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Jim Klug with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures. We've got another Facebook Live session coming to you right now from the backyard studios of Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures. Uh, I am here today with Pete Vandegrift from Costa, Camille Eggdorf from Yellow Dog, and uh, we are going to be talking about sunglasses, lenses, lens technology, how to spot fish no matter where you are. Um, we're going to be taking all of your questions over the next hour or so. We want you to fire them into us. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we've got a lot of great giveaways as well. So fire those questions in. We're going to be giving away product. We're going to be giving away free Costa glasses. We want your feedback. We want your questions. We want to talk about all of the things that you want to hear about when it comes to glasses and lens technology today. So uh, first off, uh, Pete Vandegrift from Costa. Pete, tell us what you do with Costa and uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I am the fly community leader, which uh, I say, well, what, is, what does that do? What does that guy do? Uh, you know, basically it's uh, my job to work with people out in the field, like the great people at uh, Yellow Dog. Uh, I work a lot on conservation. Um, I, I work a lot with pros. Uh, I, I work a lot with events. So I'm in the field a lot. You may have met me somewhere before. It could have been uh, you know, uh, anywhere from south to north, we're all over the place. Um, so I've got to, get, you know, kind of introduce myself. I spent uh, 18 years as a guide in Alaska. Um, you know, actually uh, working for Camille's dad, um, and then I worked in Montana and uh, some some in Wyoming as well, uh, over in Livingston. And I went on to work for a Bozeman-based company. Had a wonderful experience there at uh, Sims Fishing Products and uh, was lucky enough to uh, move on to Costa. Great. Well, Pete Vandergrift here from Costa. And Camille Eggdorf, uh, you've seen her in uh, a number of film projects lately on the cover of all kinds of magazines. Uh, she shot with Confluence and Yeti and all kinds of projects. Camille, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so, um, you know, Montana born and raised. Uh, spent kind of half my time between Montana and Alaska. My my parents have a, a program up in uh, Bristol Bay, which is where uh, Pete started guiding back in the early 90s. Early 90s, yeah. yeah, a little while ago. Yeah, so you knew me when I was like that tall. That's right. <laughs> Maybe That's smaller. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we got some stories to tell, but we'll wait till a little later. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, but uh, so I work over at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures, and I manage the Alaska program along with Christmas Island, and then also assist with Kamchatka, Russia. Um, but uh, yeah, Montana born and raised and um, love the fish and, and excited to uh, learn a little bit more about these sunglasses today and um, kind of go over some different lenses, frames and all sorts of stuff. But uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Well, that's great. Well, Coast and Yellow Dog bringing this session to you uh, live from uh, the backyard here in Bozeman. Um, fire in your questions to us. We want to hear uh, you know, all wait, the wait, things wait. that you want to know. Don't, don't say fire. Don't, don't say, say fire. fire. Been pretty smoky out here in Montana. Good I don't point. Want to hear the word. Shoot us your question. That's a four-letter word question. right now. That's right. That's so right. we want to hear from you. Um, anything you've ever wanted to know about coasters in particular, lens technology, how to see better on the flats or on the river, anywhere you are on the water. That's what we're here to talk about with one of the uh, the experts in the industry right here. Now before we do that, Pete, I know we wanted to give a shout out to some people down in Texas. Absolutely. You know, I mean, as we've all been watching, uh, you know, things unfold in Texas and Louisiana with Hurricane Harvey. Uh, you know, Coast is based uh, down there in Florida. We knew a thing or two about hurricanes, and uh, this is a bad one. Uh, we have a, a lot of our uh, customers are down there, a lot of our friends are down there, a lot of our pros are down there. Um, in fact, one of our pros, Captain uh, Scott Summerlot, uh, you know, he, he helped with the, the uh, rescue efforts. I was just told that he was on CNN a little bit, you know, a little while ago. Uh, you know, I know yesterday he, he helped 76 people get to higher ground. I want to give a shout out to Scott and uh, fishing you know, guide getting getting involved. Right man, there. getting involved. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he lost his fish camp. Um, you know, I know Billy Trimble's out there helping. They're just a, a lot of folks, and I, I think a lot of us have seen that that shot that went viral of a line of fishermen in boats heading to the affected area. I mean, that mm -hmm. just tells you what kind of industry we're in. You know, we're we're here to help. We're all. Uh, you know, banding together, and uh, Coast was wondering what we could do, and uh, you know, so we've started a GoFundMe site. It's uh, Costa. Uh, it's GoFundMe slash Costa dash Harvey dash Relief, and um, we match anything that you give there. So uh, we're hoping to 
to reach that, uh, you know, to, to, to reach those folks with a, a little bit of cash. And we're also putting together some care packages to get down there out of people in need. Uh, one thing that I talked to Scott yesterday, and one of the things he said is he said, you know, this is something that's going to unfold not just in the next few days, it's the next few months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keep them in your thoughts, see what you can do, and uh, let's not forget about them. It, it was amazing. Uh, when you watch the news footage, you look at the armada of boats that are there helping people, rescuing people, and it's sportsmen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're seeing flat skiffs, you're seeing bass trackers, you are right. seeing sportsmen mm -hmm. out there by the hundreds and the thousands helping people. And what, a, what an incredible effort. So Absolutely. our thoughts are with Texas, with all of our, our friends, our customers down there, um, our specialty retail shops uh, down in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, Bio City Angler, Gordy and Sons Outfitters. Mm -hmm. uh, we're thinking about you guys, hoping everyone's safe. And uh, as Pete said, the GoFundMe uh, Costa Harvey uh, relief page. Check it out, and uh, Costa's going to be matching those funds. So, uh, again, uh, keep your questions coming. We're going to get started here. Um, we've got a few things that have come in. Um, the first question, and we're going to jump back and forth sure. um, right off the bat. Uh, Costa has great technologies, but we've got uh, Matt who wants to know how much viewing difference is there when comparing a, a, a polymer or plastic lens to glass. So That's, let's talk right off the bat about some technologies here. Absolutely, you know, and, and we get this question all the time, you know, we, we make both poly and glass lenses. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to find, uh, uh, you know, uh, glass sunglasses that um, are, uh, oops, excuse me, I just answered a phone call there. Let me hang up on them. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're looking at your questions as you send them in here. We're not we're not checking our Facebook here. We're actually uh, watching you guys uh, send your questions in on Facebook. So keep them coming. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, we, so anyway, uh, so polarized lenses, uh, glass or plastic. Um, you know, we're going to talk about 580 a little bit later, but uh, I'll just talk real quick about why you would pick one of, over the other. Um, you know, uh, polycarbonate is lighter. Um, that's the one of the big differentiation points. Uh, you know, people that want a really light feel on their face, um, and, and glass is more durable. Out of the box with Costas, they both have that 580 technology, and they're they're both going to have very clear optics. Uh, we're uh, continuously seen as the clearest sunglass on the planet. We're really proud of that, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the hundred plus patents that we have on our technology. Um, but glass, you know, in the long haul, especially if you're uh, an avid angler or if you're going to, uh, you know, a place that you just can't have your glasses fail. That's salt water, um, that's somewhere where you're deep in the bush. Uh, I always recommend glass. It's very scratch resistant. Uh, and Costa's, by the way, we're 20% lighter than uh, any other glass on the market. So, wow. yeah, so it's good. So, and we'll talk a little bit about fit in a bit, and that'll I'll help you answer questions about why does a sunglass feel heavy on my face. That's right. Now, one of the questions, Camille, as you said, you run the Alaska program, the Christmas Island program. Um, at Yellow Dog, we get questions from people who are traveling all over the world. We send thousands of people a year out to the salt water, to the fresh water, uh, and all over. The place. All over. And, and the overwhelming questions we get are all about gear and equipment what to bring and at the very top of that list people ask about glasses and lenses that's what they want to know uh, I'm headed to the Seychelles or I'm headed to Christmas Island mm -hmm. or I'm headed steelhead fishing you know up where it's probably a little bit overcast and darker what glasses do I want to bring and we're gonna be talking a lot about that um, so we talked a little bit about some of the difference between the, the, the polycarbonate lenses and the, the glass lenses yeah um, Another question that's just come in from J.B. Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best lens color for low light conditions? Oh, we get that question yeah, all the time. That's, yeah, that's, that's, a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. Well, this is playing right to our strong suit. Uh, just this year, uh, we launched the Sunrise Silver Mirror, which is the most light transmission. So light transmission is how much light is getting to your eyes. It's the most light transmission of any polarized sunglass ever made. So. That's a big deal, and they're, they're called the Sunrise Silver Mirror. And not only are they good in that low light condition, uh, they've also, we tested them with a, a, a lot of our pros down in Florida, and especially the permit fishermen went crazy over them. Um, you know, a lot of times you're chasing the permit around and uh, you're in very light condition, 
and sometimes they won't even get up on the flat until a cloud comes over top. So to have that lens and to be able to see that eat, not just uh, you know identify the fish, but see it tip and eat the fly, can be the difference between uh, you know fish of a lifetime uh, or not seeing uh, seeing that fish at all. Mm -hmm. So sunrise silver mirror, um, absolutely. We make this in a number. Of, we don't make it in every style. We make it in a number of different styles and a lot of our popular ones like Blackfin and Fantail and Motu and Tuna Alley, um, as well as so, some uh, women's frames uh, like the Isabella here. Mm -hmm. Right on. Well, one of the things we talked about on the questions that we get, um, we have about 25 different people that work at Yellow Dog, and I can tell you that there are 25 Costa addicts. Uh, when you walk into the Yellow Dog offices, or you meet a Yellow Dog team member or a crew of us out on the road at the destination, mm -hmm. and they're going to be wearing Costas. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you guys uh, have been great to Yellow Dog over the years, and as such, we've really formed this wonderful working partnership and relationship, which we love. But um, you know, there's a reason that when you find someone who works at Yellow Dog, who probably spends a good deal of time out on the road in these faraway destinations, a lot of times in salt water, mm -hmm. wherever it may be. Yeah. Um, we're rocking Costas. It's as simple as that. And, and sure. you could probably be wearing anything, but when it comes down to having the best gear, uh, this is this is what we wear. Now, one of the interesting things is a couple weeks ago, we did a Facebook Live session with the crew from Alphonse Fishing Company, all the professional guides from the Seychelles. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time with those guys. We sat here. We, we took viewer questions. Uh, one of the questions that came in is, what's the most important piece of equipment I need to bring with me to the salt water? And as they went around, it was... Sunglasses, 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 sunglasses. Yeah. I mean, yeah. absolute top of the list. And, and these are guys that do it professionally. They do it yep. nine months a year. If they can't see the fish, yeah. both you know they as guides and their clients, they're and not the in the game. Yeah, no question, no question. And you know, I, I mean, more so than any other, you know, a, a, any other type of fishing. Fly fishing is a visual sport. We all know it. You know, it's not about the feel. You need to see that eat in order to catch that fish. Mm -hmm. So that means sunglasses are. You know, are, are are you know as important as anything, and uh, you know we're just lucky that you know we've got this great technology. And you know, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about where it all came from and kind of the history of Costa, if you'd like me to. Yeah, why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit yeah, about I'd the like history of Costa? That. This is a lot of people don't know this about yeah. how this whole deal started. These aren't yeah. just your you know your grandfather's sunglasses. That's here. right. That's right. So uh, you know, in the early '80s, a group of four offshore fishermen. Uh, you know, fished a lot of tournaments, uh, they fished a lot of sailfish, you know, they're staring up at kites, you know, they're flying kites trying to catch sailfish, or they're, they're out in the, uh, you know, in the ocean day after day after day, and uh, they were using just, you know, your crappy old, uh, you know, sunglasses, and they said, you know what, we, we can do a better job than this. So their number one focus was to make the best fishing eyewear on the planet, um, and we haven't deviated since. It, w it was four folks. I mean, this is a real American story. It was at Ormond Beach. This is, uh, you know, less than 10 miles where our home office and our manufacturing facility is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and they sold out of their garage to start with. That's um, you know, now we sell. That reminds me of uh, the story at Apple. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a great American story, yeah. you know. And, I mean, we're really proud that we're the last major sunglass brand that's manufactured right here in USA, you know. And ten miles from where it started. American made. That's American wonderful. made. That's American gosh, made. That's, yeah, that's really cool. cool. Um, so you know. So anyway, I mean, that's kind of the the roots of where we come from. Um, where, you know, I can tell you, it's a very fishy group, uh, deeply rooted in conservation. Uh, we get out there and we do it, and uh, you know, it's been a real pleasure uh, to work with the folks there. There's about 150 that work right there, uh, growing all the time. Uh, the the company's doing great and. A lot of that has to do with our cutting edge technology like mm -hmm. 580, which I'll get into in nauseating detail in a moment. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, keep these questions coming in, guys. We're going to be doing some giveaways here in just a few minutes. I think we'll give away our first pair of glasses, so mm -hmm. stay tuned. We're going to be giving away stuff throughout the, uh, the, the Facebook Live session here. Sounds good. Um, a couple comments that have just come in that I'll share. Dave McKenna says, uh, we wore the Sunrise Silver Mirror in the flats of Honduras recently. Amazing for permit. So there's a, a testimonial right there from Dave McKenna. Thanks for sending that in. Thanks, Dave. Curtis Fleming, that's a name we know. Oh, yeah, he we says, know. Uh, Peter, one of the greatest ambassadors in the industry, he says, thanks for all that you do for the Fly Rod Chronicles. So uh, thanks for tuning in, yep, Curtis. Absolutely. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you, Curtis. And uh, let's see, uh, Brock Harrison, 
Another testimonial. Just got to try out my new green mirrors on uh, Hebgen Lake in the bright light and the sunrise silver mirrors on a low light day in Harriman Ranch this past weekend. Both were great. Thanks. So thanks awesome. for your comments, Brock. That's Absolutely awesome. Great. Uh, Dave McKenna teed in one more time, said, any plans for a sunrise silver mirror in glass? Well, I guess I can uh, let the cat out of the bag that uh, I'll tell you a little story about the Sunrise Silver Mare. Uh, all of the fishermen in Costa freaked out about them. We're like, this is going to go huge. And uh, there was a little skepticism, and maybe we didn't order as deep as we needed to, and we ran out of them pretty soon into the process. You know, because we're uh, manufacturing in the U.S., we were able to, to pivot and able to make those uh, so that our, our retailers and our fans could get them. And we saw such a wonderful reaction from them that we're working on glass for next year. Nice. That's wonderful. Well, that's perfect. Well, we've got a, uh, an Instagram comment that just came in from, I think it's Cullen Ashby or Ashby Cullen. I'm not sure. Um, the, the two first names there. Uh, he wants to know how important is, and this is a great segue to something we wanted to talk about today. How important is it to have a frame that fits your face? And does light pollution from the sides of your glasses really affect your vision when looking into the water, so oh my gosh. I, I know you, you've yeah. seen this a lot. It's both fresh and salt. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, having Huge. that that fit, that proper fit around your eyes. Let's, so let's talk important. a little bit about that. So Absolutely. Important. I mean, fit is critical with yeah. sunglasses. Lens is is maybe the most important, but your lens won't work if it's fogged up all the time. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of keys to uh, fitting a sunglass properly. Um, you know, first off, you have an arm length. So every Costa has a different arm length. You know, your ear should really fit right at the curve. So if you look at, at me and the props here, I've got a nice curve. Of course, I've got my shaggy hair, so you can't quite see it. But so you should have that, that curve right over. It shouldn't pinch your clamp here. One of the most important things is that it's sitting on all three uh, areas. So both ears and, your, and the bridge of your nose. So then that weight is shared uh, over your entire face. And so it doesn't get tired. It doesn't slip off. You want to make sure there's not slippage there. Uh, you know, what we see... Constantly, someone's trying to squeeze into a sunglass that's too small, or uh, they're looking for a fashion for a larger sunglass that they really shouldn't be wearing. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in angling, uh, being able to block out the sides is huge, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to seal. And what sealing is, is when you're fitting a sunglass, if your glasses hit here on your eyebrows or down on your cheek, uh, that's why your, your sunglasses are going to fog up. Yeah. So make sure you have some space. Uh, you know, Costa, we make 64 different frames in small through extra large. So we have a frame for everyone, whether it's rimless, whether it's uh, a metal, or whether it's some of our more traditional wraps. Um, I would say, you know, our, our sport frames, um, they tend to wrap a lot. And that's because really those bright sunny days, you know, the, the sun's coming over your right shoulder. Uh, you don't want that to get inside. Uh, we have an anti-reflective coating inside, so if it does, it won't reflect quite as much. Um, but but still, you want to block that out as an angle. That's a great, great question. Getting the right fit to your sunglasses is is imperative. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. huge. It it's makes huge. all the difference. Yeah. And there's Absolutely. nothing more frustrating than getting a pair of sunglasses that don't fit correctly, and you're on a trip of a lifetime somewhere, and they're constantly falling off, or they're giving you a headache because they're too tight, or they're, or they're fogging up in the heat. Oh, That's yeah. a big there's, one. There's, there's yeah. so yeah. many different variables. Right. So you know, yeah. fit is absolutely one of the most like critical things, as Peter was saying. I mean, yeah. they, ha they have to fit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So good, good information on the fit and the importance of fit. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, Facebook Live session with Pete Vandergriff from Costa, Camille Eggdorf from Yellow Dog. My name is Jim Klug from Yellow Dog. We're out here in the uh, outdoor Yellow Dog studios talking about Costa glasses, technology, fit, lens color, all these good things. Keep your questions coming. Uh, we love this. We, uh, we're here as long as it takes to, to talk about them all. I think we ought to do a giveaway. Right. Yeah, let's do a giveaway. Do what do you want to give away? Well, let's give, give let's give away a pair of glasses. Let's do it. And uh, we're we're randomly drawing names on these questions that come in, so keep them going. Uh, our first winner, uh, great comment. Uh, love my Costas. Helps me see those fish. Greg Lyles, you just won yourself another pair of Costas. All right, Greg. So Greg, <laughs> shoot us your uh, contact information when you get a chance. We'll get those out to you. Thank you so All much right. for being a, a Costa fan and for participating today we really appreciate it absolutely and if you're an angler greg and you don't have that sunrise silver mirror in your arsenal highly suggest that's a good set to get mm -hmm. absolutely. you may never take them off absolutely so. um so we got a question from evelyn brown she has two costas uh she loves the green and the copper green yep. mirror and the copper both 
Um, her husband wants to get a pair of coasters, but has a prescription. Ah, do you have a solution for her? We do have a solution for that. So we do make prescription coasters. Um, you know, the best thing you can do is you can go to our website. You can go to the dealer locator, and uh, any of those dealers that says RX next to it means that it's a it's a uh, Costa RX dealer. You go in there, you know, with your prescription. You try on some Costas, and uh, you know, a number of years ago. Uh, we actually put in a, a, a very expensive optical lab so that we could perfect our 580 technology with all of those uh, cuts you need if you have any sort of astigmatism. Um, and, you know, we could make sure that you get the wrap. Um, what a lot of folks that, that uh, uh, you know, need a prescription set, they're really used to having something with a flat lens, you know. So they're, you, they're, you know, they're troubled by light coming in from the side. That's one of the reasons that we built that lab. So now, uh, eight base and six base lenses, so that's ones that are, have more of a curvature on them, uh, we're able to do prescriptions in. So for some folks, it'll be life changing to be able to block that light from the side when they never could. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, you yeah. used to have the old, like, big flat ones that fit over your prescription. <laughs> that's right. Speaking Those of your grandfathers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. The, the old fit overs. The old school. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Big well, uh, uh, Greg Lyle says yeah. thanks. Uh, so that's good. You know what? Greg just said this is very cool. Thank you, Greg. He says, uh, hey, instead of sending them to you, send a pair to someone who's helping out in Houston instead. Oh, that is very that's cool. Awesome. That so is thank you, Greg. absolutely great. That's a great idea. Okay. That's, that's we'll awesome. That. We'll do that in your name, Greg. That's great. We appreciate that's that, awesome. Greg. Thank you, guys. Thank Keep you. those questions coming. Um, we've got some questions from Brett Sumter. He's uh, okay. sent a couple in. wants to know about the possibility of swapping lenses and frames. Is it possible to... Replace frames, replace lenses, interchange them on his own. Okay, well, on your own, uh, not quite possible. But what I will tell you is, because we do all of our uh, all of our different uh, uh, lens crafting right there in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, if you were to use uh, a, a set so long that you break your glasses, you can send them in. You can get the same lens, or you can get a different lens put in there. And uh, there is a fee involved with that. Um, we do have. We talk a little bit about warranty. Yeah. We do have a lifetime manufacturer's warranty, which is uh, that's on material and workmanship. Now, if your dog chews up your glasses, that's uh, that's a tough one. That's a training issue. That's a training yeah. issue. That is <laughs> that's exactly right. That's not a warranty. That's a training issue. Um, but uh, if that were the case, and the lenses are still good, you can send them back, and for a small fee, you can get those uh, lenses put into a new frame or. Uh, if your lenses break, you can get new lenses put in that frame. We believe in keeping them on the road. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a, a change that we made, a couple changes that we made in our uh, in our frames. Uh, the big one is when we got involved in uh, uh, the Kick Plastic Initiative. You know, we saw what was happening uh, as we were exploring around. We do a lot of exploration with O Search, um, with folks like Oliver White. You know, mm -hmm. folks from Yellow Dog who are uh, traveling around the globe, and we were having an alarming issue come to light and that is all of that plastic uh, you know it it, it, uh, it settles in these huge ocean gyres you know in the middle of the Pacific twice the size of Texas um, you know these big trash pad packages and we didn't want to add to that anymore well we started by looking at some of our procedures and some of our products and one of the products you know that came of course right away was our frames we used to make them out of uh, you know out of a plastic uh, we now make them out of a bioresin, so it's a castor seed oil. So castor plant, we take the seeds, we mash those down, we use that, um, we use that material with a hardener, and that's now how every set of, um, of our, our glasses are made, um, aside from the metals that are made from those. Mm -hmm. So that's a big step that we did. They're very durable, and uh, you know they're green, and we're really proud of that fact. So. That's right. That's right. wonderful. You got a favorite pair of Costas that uh, your, are your go-to style, Camille? I've got a number. <laughs> number. You probably got a whole drawer full of Costas, I bet. I've got a collection. Um, you know, a couple of my favorite uh, frames, um, the inlet is one of my favorites. That's always been a favorite of mine. It's one I keep going back to all the time. It's, um, you know, fits very well to, the, to my shape ahead, basically. Um, and, uh, you know, come in various different colors. They got pink, they got, you know, Tur uh, turtle or uh, tortoise. Tortoise. There you yep. go. Tortoise. Um, so that that one has always been my favorite. 
um, copper lenses pretty much. Uh, when I'm out on the flats somewhere, I usually use a green mirror mm -hmm. or, a, or a blue mirror. Yep. Um, another one of my favorites is actually this lens or this frame here, mm -hmm. which is the Copra. Mm -hmm. And this is the O Search um, edition. And um, um, yeah, I absolutely love them. They're a great frame. And, um, absolutely. Yeah, I can't complain. I mean, all my all my coasts have been awesome. Well, that's, well <laughs> you know, I, you're doing some awesome things out there. Uh, you know, including you know winning the the GoPro Mountain Games uh, <laughs> Two Flag Stream, which uh, is pretty impressive. You know, quite, so, quite frankly, that's you. really cool. Uh, you <laughs> know, really casting. How, how many feet did you cast? Ninety three. Uh, I think it was ninety, 90 something. Ninety three mm -hmm. feet with a five weight. Um, you know, you think you're a good caster? Try that. And uh, you have to stay in a track about I don't know two and a half feet wide. Uh, so not only that, but uh, then went on to a fishing. Day and uh, she beat everybody. So everybody. Everybody. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, I picked the right flies. There so you there's, go. There was, a little, there was quite a bit of luck in that too. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, this is hundreds of the best fishermen from around the country come to compete, and uh, she won. She so sent them all home. She sent them all back. That's pretty cool. Um, it's but, pretty cool. But what, one thing I, I we've got some more stuff coming oh, in. Sure. Um, and I want to get back to lens color you were talking about your favorite yeah, lenses yeah. and the different situations and we're going to sure. throw out some scenarios here in a few minutes that talk about okay if i'm headed you know british columbia for steelhead or i'm going to the flats of mm -hmm. you know belize or wherever it may be what do you recommend so we're going to get into that we've got a lot of questions specifically about that that's great um one question i'll hit you with a tough one here rick bates sent us in a yeah. question earlier today he said he's looking to purchase a great pair of sunglasses for bone fishing on the flats okay. he wants to know why they cost so much <laughs> and uh, he says yeah. actually he says it's not just me my wife wants to know and so gotcha. that's a good question um, <laughs> would you, it, it would be helpful if you explained why I need the pricey ones is what oh, he said so, okay, well, and he said by the way yeah. you can have her phone number if you need it, and explain <laughs> it to her. So, I love that's it right. Rick we're gonna answer your question right that's now right. Let, let's see if we can get you a new set of glasses well <laughs> Uh, you know, I think the, the one thing that uh, I always come back to is, uh, you know, our, our eyes are really precious, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are, especially if you're a fisherman, you know, think about if your eyes started to uh, degenerate. And, you know, so that, let me talk a little bit about uh, COSIS 580 technology. First off, we have over 100 patents on our sunglasses. A lot of that's in the lenses. A lot of that's in the frames. Uh, what does 580 mean? You know, everyone's like, I, I asked this today of, uh, you know, the Yellow Dog crowd who is, you know, I would say they know a heck of a lot about Costa, and everyone's like, nah, I, don't, I don't really know. 580 has to do with 580 nanometers of light. What the heck does that mean? That's yellow light from the sun. So yellow light from the sun in the, you know, in the visible spectrum is an eye irritant. It's kind of what you felt if you've ever been out on a long fishing trip, uh, not wearing Costas, and your eyes start to water, you get home and your eyes are bloodshot. You're actually, you know, you're actually sunburning your eyes, and that's that yellow sun. So protecting your eyes from that yellow sun, um, it makes them relax. It's more comfortable that day. Uh, you know, pair that with 100% UV protection, which all of our sunglasses are. That polarization, and you're really protecting your eyes. So that's number one. Um, you know, and that 580 technology, everyone's been chasing it. Uh, but you know we came up with it and, uh, and, and it's our technology so uh, that's one reason they're a little bit more expensive heck they're a premium sunglass uh, if you want to protect your eyes if you also want to get longer life out of them this comes back to poly and glass um, that's why I always uh, talk about glass then uh, getting a set of Costas is going to be the best purchase you can do well it, it's an investment too I mean here's the thing and, and this is where we come in with Yellow Dog and sending people all over the world. First of all, you're going to a faraway destination, you're spending a lot of money and you're investing time to get there. Mm -hmm. You look at your key pieces of equipment, you've just invested a couple thousand dollars in your rods and reels, yeah. okay? You've bought $100 saltwater fly lines, you've got $150 flats boots, I mean, you've got packs and soft goods and everything you can imagine. You've got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear yeah. and none of it matters if you cannot spot that fish to see He's where so you need right. to make that yeah. cast. And no it gets question. back to what we were talking about with the Seychelles guides. Number one most important piece of gear they could, they would recommend, glasses. Mm -hmm. If Absolutely. you can't see what you're fishing for, you're out of the game. That's right. right. Yeah. I mean, I know you've, you've been all over the world, Camille. You've seen this. You, you go to lodges. You run into people that have spent money to get there. 
good money on the lodge. They've got all the best gear, and they skimped yep. on their sunglasses. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. one of the main reasons why, you know, when I do hosted trips or travel, even on my own to do visitations, I always carry an extra couple pairs of Costas with me because, you know, a lot of times I'll run into people that have went the cheap way mm -hmm. and regretted it in the long run, yeah. big time. Yeah. And, you know, it really boils down to the fact that, you know, you get what you pay for. Yeah. If you decide to go cheap, you're going to get something that's probably cheap. That's right. And it's not going to last long. But if you go, you know, with the more expensive route, you're buying quality. It's mm -hmm. something that's going to stick with you for a long time. And, you know, as you were saying, your eyes are such an important part of not just fishing, but your every day. I mean, every day. you know, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine what it would be like to not have my eyes anymore. Yeah. And so I'm going to do everything I possibly can to protect them and keep them safe. Absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, other than that harsh yellow light, it's that, um, you know, it's that high intensity blue and violet light. And you've heard a lot about this. If you've been following uh, kind of the news and sunglasses and, and eye care. Um, that's, you know, that blue light causes macro degeneration. That's like when you're looking down at your cell phone and you look up at the distance and it just, you, your eyes can't quite focus um, because that high intensity uh, blue violet light uh, comes from your phones, comes from the sun, it comes from computer screens, it comes from your television screen. It's everywhere. We're beating our eyes up over it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can protect them, especially outside, uh, it's a really important thing to do and it's really a buzzword in the optical industry right mm -hmm. now. That's right, and, and, and Rick Bates, I tell you, you asked a question that led to 10 minutes of discussion. It's one of the best <laughs> questions we have today. And you know what, for that, we're going to give you a pair of Costas. You're, you you're our next yeah. Costa winner yes. on this uh, yeah. Facebook Live program here. Very nice. Tell your wife she still has to buy you a second pair because <laughs> you got to have a backup, and you might as well go good. Don't cheap on that, but That's Rick, great. congratulations. Make sure you get us your contact information. We're going to get you a pair of Costas for uh, for submitting that excellent question that led great to question. so many yeah. great comments. Yes. i got a couple more uh, testimonials I want to read here. Uh, okay. Brett Hall, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, sent in 580's best lens ever right there. <laughs> Somebody there who knows. Uh, RJ uh, Marisic, Maris Maris I guess. I'm sorry, RJ, if I butchered your last name. But he said... Didn't know they were made in the USA. Total game changer. Glad to hear it. So very cool. And I don't think a lot of people realize you guys are the only high-end sunglass that's made in the I US. I know, I know. That we, is very cool. We, we don't like to uh, pat ourselves on the back or like preach from tall buildings, but uh, we're really proud of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's great to go in there and see, you know, actual people in the back hand grinding the lenses and oh, putting them cool. into the sunglasses. It's really cool. That's so. really cool. Right. Scott Curry says, uh, my green mirrors are a game changer on some smaller tailwaters in Colorado. So, Scott, thanks for that. We appreciate it. I got another. I'm, I'm going to be terrible with this name. This is Aaron um, Rybliski. Rybliski. He knows yeah, you, Dave. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he says, uh, what are the best lenses for hunting 50-inch muskies in Minnesota Metro Lakes, Pete? <laughs> and Aaron, I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, man. I apologize. That's great. Well, uh, <laughs> he happens to know where I was yesterday, which was hunting giant muskies in Metro Lake <laughs> yesterday. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I wore the Silver Mirror Copper. Uh, and, you know, that's one that's right in the middle of light transmission. So, again, we were talking about the Sunrise Silver Mirror, which is 30%. Uh, those copper mirror silvers are uh, right there at about 12%. And then if you want to block out as much sun as possible, then you go either green mirror or you do blue mirror. And I'll, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, I don't want to, I, I love the idea of trying to stump the chump of, uh, you know, what lens you should use for what situation. So I, I won't say we're getting too there. much. Okay, yeah, we're right. getting there. We're going to do that for sure. Oh, we got, we got a nice uh, note from, from your wife. Oh, oh, she great. said, "Smile, you're doing fine." <laughs> <laughs> That's Am perfect. Good. Thank you. That's perfect. So, uh, anyway, Thanks, we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Keep your questions coming in. Uh, we're really glad you're joining us on this Facebook Live session with Pete Vandergrift from Costa, Camille Eggdorf, myself, Jim Clute from Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Keep those questions coming. We're going to keep answering them. And we're going to keep giving stuff away. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, let's let's do a little stump the chump. I yes, like this yeah, idea. Stump the chump. So we're going to uh, throw out some destinations right okay. here. Uh, some typical fishing situations. These are questions that Camille and I and the rest of the Yellow Dog team we get this all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, I'm headed to blank. Mm -hmm. What lenses do I want? And gotcha. I'm going to preface that with with saying it. You really don't just want to bring one pair of sunglasses when you go anywhere. There's, there's two thoughts behind that. First of all, 
let's say I'm going to the middle of nowhere in Kamchatka mm -hmm. or the middle of nowhere in Guyana to fish yeah. for Arapaima, some of these different places. I do something silly and I drop in the river on day one. Well, you better have a backup pair. So yeah, you absolutely. always have to have at least two pairs of sunglasses with you. Mm -hmm. That's just smart so that, you know, if something yeah. happens to one, if it's broken or lost or, you know, anything, you leave it on the airplane like we've all done. Absolutely. Uh, you've got that backup pair. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than that, there's the, the school of thought that says, okay, you've got different lenses mm -hmm. for different weather and visibility situations. And that's no huge. No question. No question. That's mm -hmm. huge. So. I, I, I preface this game of Stump the Chump by saying that because I don't know that there's just one answer, mm -hmm. but what we should do is I'm going to throw some destinations out there. Let's talk about if you were to have your, your primary pair, your secondary mm -hmm. pair, and maybe even a third pair that's going to be in your traveling kit, what are those going to be? Absolutely, and right. I think that's a great point to bring a couple of sets, uh, two or three, you know, in case you lose them, and you know, you never know what the weather's going to be like, and that can, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of uh, difference of, of what you're going to wear. Plus, you go to some of these places, and I mean, I can tell you, you know, you go to the ends of the earth, and if they could have any piece of my equipment when I leave, bar none, they want my sunglasses yep. every right. time, and so I typically don't come back with any sunglasses. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's a really mm -hmm. good tip for your guides; they love it. So that's right. So here we go. Um, as we know, the flat season is about to begin. Things yeah. are about to get extra busy with both bookings and, and soon uh, late fall and winter travel down to the world mm -hmm. of saltwater. Let's talk about the Caribbean. I'm headed down on a flats trip to the Caribbean, maybe Belize, Yucatan, mm -hmm. Bahamas, all these different places the yellow dog can send you. Mm -hmm. um, Talk to me about what's in my kit as far as glasses. Now, do you want to pick a certain specific spot? Because here's the, this is why I Ooh, ask. Technical. Um, really? Are we going to be river fishing for tarpon or it's tan any water? We're on the flats. Gonna be flats? Okay. We're on the flats. We're Anywhere in the Caribbean. Okay. Bright, sandy flats. We're going to be fishing some bonefish, hoping those permit roll up and over, sure. and maybe there's even the tarpon migration going on. So, you know, the primary set for high, bright sun is going to be that green mare copper. So, green mare on the outside. You're looking at copper through. Um, the next one that I would say that's going to be a primary high bright sun. Again, boy, that sunrise silver mirror, if you have overcast, it is such a game changer. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you're getting out there early, you're going out there early, the fish are like the tarpon are there, they're rolling. You know, you, you, you won't be able to see them with that dark lens, but with that light lens, you may just be able to see them earlier. You can start fishing them earlier. That, I think those would be the two. And then that, you know, silver mare copper right there in the middle. You show you it, it's raining, mm -hmm. you're still going to go out. Absolutely. Yeah. You still have to go out That's for right. sure. That's right. Um, and then, I mean, real quick about another technology. So uh, here are our glasses, a pair of permits. This is the silver mare copper. This is like the do it all lens. One of those patents that we have, we actually press the mirror inside of two pieces of uh, glass there. So I can take. Let's see if I have my keys with me. I can take my keys. You would never do this to another brand of sunglasses, and I can just scratch it right oh, there. This makes me cringe yeah. just and watching you can that. See, right? <laughs> yeah. You can. You should see. You know, people. Are like, oh, don't do it. Uh, you know, not a scratch on them. So that's really important if you're a klutz like me, and the first thing you do is you look down, you drop them into the gravel. Um, so another reason glass is really good, scratch resistant, and that um, that uh, merit. Uh, that mirrored layers between two layers of glass. So to recap, Caribbean flax fishing, mm -hmm. your three lenses are number one? Number one, green mirror. Number two? I'd say that's sunrise silver mirror. Okay. And then if you're going to go three, I would go the do-it-all lens, which is that copper silver mirror. Copper. So there's your kit right there for bright sun, flax fishing, really anywhere in the Caribbean. You can mm -hmm. throw Cuba, the Seychelles, those types of fisheries Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. The green mirror is the is the number one. It's the number yeah. one, yep. All right. And really, it's a copper base. Anytime you're going to be looking for fish and you have a bottom, you're going to want that that green, that copper base, no copper matter which base. one it is. You know, yeah. I mean, one of the things, everybody's eyes are a little bit different. Um, I was telling you all this before. Uh, the lighter your eyes are, the more susceptible they are for, to harmful rays. So you may prefer those darker lenses if you have darker eyes. Uh, you may want as much light to your eyes as possible. If you're a permit fisherman, it sounds like you want absolutely as much uh, light yeah. to your eyes at all moments, so you go with that sunrise silver mirror. 
And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pete, but I've heard in the past, and I think I've actually heard you say it before too, but you want to match the color of the lens kind of with the water that you're fishing. Very good yeah. point. Absolutely true. That's, you know. that, that's a great comment, Camille. And actually, so let's, let's see if we can stump Pete with this. Okay. So okay. you've got that kind of brilliant greenish water on the flats, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're leaving the flats. We're headed to Guatemala or Costa Rica. We're going out in blue water. All right. Okay. So we've changed the color of water, like yep. you just said. Yep. What are we going with now? All right. Well, I mean, that's that's the uh, lens we cut our teeth on. That's uh, that's the blue mirror. Uh, that blocks a lot of light from the sun. So you're going out there. You know, you're flying your teasers up in flags uh, or up in kites. So you're looking up at the sun all the time. Or you know, you're up in the tuna tower and you're looking down. You're trying to see those sailfish uh, turning on the teasers and being able to feed it in front of them. Uh, that, you know, that gray base in the blue mirror, that's when you're never going to see the, the bottom of the water. So you're mm -hmm. looking for shapes, you're looking yeah. for shades, and you want to protect your eyes because you're out there in blue water, uh, you know, big sun, lots of chop, lots of glare. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's that's good to know. You yep. match the, the color of the mirror yep. to the water. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so green mirror flats, blue mirror, blue water, blue water deep water, offshore. That's right. yep. I like that. And then that silver mirror is just like you were saying, just kind of the all around. The all around, you know, even yeah. Even for probably fresh water too. Absolutely. You know, um, I live here in uh, the better part of Montana over in Missoula. That's, and, why, that's uh, why he's got the long hair <laughs> on the sides. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, well, I will point out your uh, dad, or your son asked it, said today, Dad, are you a hippie? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I was talking uh, about how hip I am uh, yeah, with yeah. my new my new glasses. Yeah. My five year old said hip, and he said you're hippie. You're a hippie. Yeah. yeah. I said, no. I never never pegged you as a hippie. <laughs> hey, you know, come over to Missoula anytime. I think it'd be a great like Halloween costume. You just roll into the <laughs> office one day with like this dress. I need the John Lennon model. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. Who knows? Perfect. Maybe next year. <laughs> Call it well, the flute. so here's another one. Um, let's shift gears from the salt water. Let's say we're headed up to your old stomping grounds up there in Alaska, mm -hmm. either you know maybe southeast Alaska where you get a lot of rain, maybe yeah, even uh, British Columbia. You know that part of the world where yeah. you're going to get some overcast. You're you're on a river, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you might be still light. fishing, low light. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know maybe shorter. You know, you know high peaks. Yeah. Sometimes you know. What do you think for those freshwater low light situations? Yeah. So no question, it's the Sunrise Silver Mare as your primary lens. You probably will not take it off. I remember one year I was working up on the New Shigak, and it rained every single day, all season long. It was uh, it was pretty tough, and I wished I would have had some uh, some Sunrise Silver Mares then, uh, and about four sets of waders because they got a little <laughs> ripe. Um, a waiter funk. That's right, a little waiter funk. This was back in the old neoprene days too. Oh. I didn't have the you know the great uh, Cortex waders that sends me. So, um, but uh, yeah, so Sunrise Silver Mare. Uh, you know, if it's going to be bright and sunny, you could do a, uh, uh, a silver mirror copper. And I think you'll be noticing a trend that I talk about mirror a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't said the straight up copper. And here's, here's my thinking on that, and here's what we know. Uh, so just a quick tutorial about how polarization works. A lot of people don't know that. They just know when they put them on, they can see through the glare on the water. Mm -hmm. Well, polarization is a layer in your sunglass. It's kind of like Venetian blinds. So it's got flat layers that the, the direct sunlight can't get to your eyes, and the sun that hits the water and comes up can't make it to your eye either, and that's what takes the glare off the water. But, you know, sun doesn't always act like that. You know, uh, it's, it's late in the afternoon, uh, you know, the sun is low, it's choppy on the water, and it's sending up all of these stray beams. Well, that mirror coating will just help cut that down and wipe it away and it'll help your glare line stay further out. Um, so that's why, uh, especially between copper and silver mirror copper, I really like the silver mirror copper because it, it does nothing to how dark they are. They both let exactly the same amount of light transmission through, um, but uh, that, that silver mirror just helps a little bit when you have those situations. Over the standard copper. Over the standard copper. Just give you Over the copper bit. base lens, you just got the silver mirror on. Yeah. Hey, I mean, you know how important it is. You get a shot at the fish of a lifetime, and if I can see that fish at 100 feet and not 40 feet, it can make the difference between getting a good presentation good or set up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, and you may have already answered this this question or, or mentioned it before, mm -hmm. but is that silver um, 
Is that silver mirror, is that available, or the Sunrise Silver Mirror, is that available yep. in all different frame sizes? You know, it's it's available. We've, we've put a pretty good collect, uh, collection together that should cover everyone's face, but it's not every single uh, frame that we make. So it's a specialty number. There's about eight of them out there, everything from a small fit all the way through to an extra large fit. So we try to get something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So now will we expand that come to 2018? I bet we will a little bit. Can we throw maybe feedback? an extra, extra, extra large in there, Pete, <laughs> for That's those right. of us that <laughs> have a little more to work with here? That's right. We could try. We could try. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that'll be tough. Uh, yeah, I, we'll send a pumpkin to the guys working back at the lab and see if they can put something just, on it. Yeah, just, you know, something to work with. That something would be perfect. perfect. This would, is about the size right would here. work well for me. That would be great. <laughs> so next one, uh, we're continuing to play Stump the Chump here as, as far as destinations, match the lens of the destination. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sarah, uh, boy, I don't know, this is a, an Instagram comment that came in, Sarah. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not even going to try with your last name. Uh, but if uh, if I primarily want to fish for trout in western waters, mm -hmm. U.S. West, Montana, a mm -hmm. lot of the rivers we have here in our our, our backyard and our home state, mm -hmm. what are the best all around lenses and why? Probably yeah. going to be that that it's, sunrise or that copper. That copper silver mirror. Yeah, copper, I mean, silver mirror. I, I really think uh -huh. so. Um, you know, a lot of folks just want the straight copper, uh, which is great as well. Uh, me personally, I like that that mare on there to just give me a little bit of extra something, especially if I'm out lake fishing or bigger water where I'm really working hard to cut that glare down. And uh, you know, sight nymphing, which I don't really do much, but dry fly fishing, so I can locate some fish, say, say on the Henry's Fork or bigger rivers like the Clark Fork or the Yellowstone and the Madison. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, once we came out with the Sunrise Silver Mirror. I'm telling you, I mean, I do pick my days out west, and I, I, I typically like to fish when it's overcast and the hatch is good. Um, I found myself wearing these about 75% of the time, mm -hmm. the Sunrise Silver Mirror. Uh, you know, I've kind of become addicted to them. Uh, they're a great lens. I, you know, I don't leave home without them. I've got them with me right now, just in case, mm -hmm. just in case that long-awaited rainstorm comes in here to Montana. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's good. So last destination, I'm going to throw you here. Okay. All right, we've talked about... The Caribbean, the, the flats of places like the Seychelles, Belize, Yucatan, Caribbean destinations, uh, the Bahamas I throw in there. Mm -hmm. We uh, really like the green mirror for the super bright days. Yep. Green mirror, copper based. Yeah. Um, we talked about steelhead fishing, mm -hmm. yep. kind of overcast. We like the, the sunrise uh, silver mirror. Yep. Um, we talked about western trout fishing. You like the silver mirror on the copper base. Yep. Here's one for you. Oh, and I'm sorry, Blue Water, we talked about that blue too. Water, yep. was Blue Mirror blue Copper, or Blue yep. Mirror Gray Base. That's right. Blue yep. Mirror Gray yep. Base for Blue Water. So hope you're all writing this down at home, because this That's is great. Right. <laughs> if right. not, we are going to be posting this stuff later on. We're going to be posting kind of a chart and pizza recommendations that matches up with a lot of the yellow dog fly fishing destinations. Look for a, a great blog post and, uh, and some other information on our social media sites mm -hmm. here in the next couple days that really help clarify this. So tune in and you can get that. Last one, I'm gonna stump you with this. Mm -hmm. I'm headed to the jungle. Might be Guyana, might be Amazon, might be Ooh. Bolivia. What am I wearing? Mercy Boy, that's a that's a tough one, right? Because uh, you know it's just can be so bright in the in the jungle. And it's hot, actually. It's I need hot. another beer. It's so yeah, hot. <laughs> it's so, another it's so hot. Guinness, you need another, need another beer. Yeah. You know that that that's a good one, right? Because are we gonna break away from our our you know rule on matching the watercolor? So here's what I'm gonna say. You know that bright sun is is so impactful to your eyes there that I would really say probably the green mirror is a primary because you've got tannin color water. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you're, almost brownish in a lot of places. It's almost brownish. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're rarely seeing the fish. You're, right. you're casting a lot of structure or rollers in the case of uh, Arapaima. You're, you're right. seeing them roll, but you know, after they roll and you see the, the uh, bubbles, you're casting to them, uh, but you don't see them, right? Mm -hmm. You might see the bubbles come up when they slurp your fly in, but uh, you know, so I think that just because you want to protect your eyes mm -hmm. as much as possible. So I yeah. would say that'd be primary. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with that because when I was down there, I had, um, you know, the green mirror. I think maybe I, had, I actually might have had the blue mirror too. Mm -hmm. And then copper lens. Yeah. And, um, you know, I couldn't see the fish at all, but it was yeah. more of the fact that I was just protecting my eyes. That's and right. I mean, down because there. Because the are this big. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just, Absolutely. there's so many Absolutely. things that can pluck your eyes out or damage them or 
something and just having you know a good pair of sunglasses that just protected them yeah. was more important than actually being able to see the fish and, and you know that's a rare thing you know yeah. when you can't yeah. see the fish that's not really as important but yeah. you know having a good pair of glasses to kind of keep my eyes safe from that sun and then whatever else is whizzing around my head mm -hmm. um, was a huge huge thing absolutely and you know i would say you know some of the other uh, uh fly fishing destinations or types that you would do that might be a little like striper fishing where you're throwing a lot of sinking lines, uh, you're doing a lot, of, a lot of cast and stripping, um, and you're typically not seeing the fish quite as often. You know, that's where our gray might come in or, uh, you know, we have a... Speaking of which, yeah. we, we, we forgot one. Yeah. Um, stripers, I think, is a great one to mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dustin Hahn. Dustin, you just, uh, but then he said, we haven't talked at all about like bass fishing on ponds and lakes. Ah, and that's, that's a pretty a big part one. of Coast that Nation a, right there. That is so. a big part of Coast Nation. And, you know, uh, as complex as bass fishing is, uh, you really need an arsenal. I mean, heck, you've got 40 rods on your boat, you know, with something <laughs> for eighty thousand dollar bass boat. And an $80,000 <laughs> bass boat, yeah. Like, make sure you're seeing. I mean, I would say for those sight fishing situations, you know, in the spring when you're fishing beds, um, you know, and the, those big fish are hanging out or just post spawn and you're seeing them and targeting them, that sunrise silver mirror, that's just gonna give you that, that little bit more light to your eyes and you're gonna you'd be able to see those fish that you're targeting. So I would say that that's a really good one to have in there for, uh, you know, for general, uh, when you're out there in the bright sun in the middle of the day, you know, if, if we're talking about conventional fishing, you're trying to win a tournament or you're, you're fly fishing and you're, you're fishing for structure, again, let's talk eye protection, you know, mm -hmm. keep them on there. I think there you have your pick of the litter, really. I mean, you can do a, a silver mirror copper or we even have a new lens we just came out with just this summer with our O-Search collection, which is a silver mirror gray. So it lets in a little bit more light than that blue. Uh, but that would be something that would work well, I think, in the bass world in the middle of the day when you're fishing a little deeper baits. Mm -hmm. So in, in Arsenal, uh, Dustin Hong, great question on the bass pond. Turns out you need this entire kit right here That's for right. bass fishing. So That's right. you need to have this in the boat with about 12 different pairs of Costas, yeah. exactly and you'll be in good shape yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've, we've got uh, more testimonials coming in, more comments. Steve Tatterchuk says, what's up, Pete? How are you? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Dino Williams, thanks for commenting, Dino. Dino says, thanks for the tips. Mm -hmm. um, let's give something else away. What do we have? Sure. Uh, you know what? We have this great Costa backpack for your next adventure. You could probably fit all these sunglasses right in there. Uh, we'll give you the backpack. We'll let you fill it up yourself. How about that? Well, good. Well, you know what? We've got, uh, I mean, literally hundreds of questions that are coming in via email and Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, picking one at random. We've got... Uh, Billy Wilkinson, how would you like a new uh, Costa backpack right here for uh, joining us today and commenting on Facebook? We appreciate it, Billy. Yeah, Billy. Right, Billy. You got Coming yourself you. a new backpack. Uh, shoot us your information. We'll make sure we get that to you. Right. So that's great. So, uh, Camille, what else do we want to talk about? Um, let's talk about a little bit uh, what you're seeing at Yellow Dog right now um, as far as some of the new things coming down the pipe this year, some of the exciting things in, in destination travel. Uh, you know, obviously you've got your glasses that you're going to take with you all over the world, but where are people going right now? What's hot in destination travel? What are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. So right now, as far as destinations that are really starting to ramp up and get busy, and, and we're getting a lot of calls and inquiries on, um, you know, saltwater is just now starting to kind of ramp up. Christmas Island is starting to get busy. we got the Caribbean, the Yucatan. Um, you know, people are still going down to Belize. Um, you know, it's flat it's, season coming it's, up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that time of year. And uh, as far as freshwater, things are starting to slow down. You know, we still got some great fall fishing, you know, here in the U.S. West. Um, Alaska's starting to kind of taper off a bit. The season's coming to an end. But uh, now is the time for everybody to start thinking about saltwater and, and booking that trip to somewhere that's tropical when winter hits. That's so, right. So uh, it's getting, getting busy, and, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to get out there and do some saltwater fishing. Well, and, and you know, one of the things is we live in kind of a last minute society these days. We're used to just being able to pick up our device and say, oh, I'll get this or I'll do this or I'll sure. book a flight or I'll do this. Um, it's a little harder to, to book a great destination trip when you go to that way. Now, we can do it. We, we'll get people that will call up and say, uh, hey, I'm thinking about going to Belize and uh, I've got a week and I want this. And we say, when are you thinking about going there? Well, this Thursday. 
and you know, yeah. we can do it. Yeah, but, I actually had a group that went to Alaska two days later after booking the trip. That's right. It can wow. happen. It was unreal. Yeah, and, and the team <laughs> at Yellow really Dog can move mountains to make this happen for you. <laughs> but the, the reality is, when it comes to these destination trips, you want to make sure you're set up with the best tides and moon phases, the best guides, which is Absolutely. super important. And one Absolutely. of the things that we really spend a lot of time focusing on for our clients that book through Yellow Dog. Um, and to do that, you really want to start early. And so what we tell people right now, everybody has got the kids back to school. Uh, you know, fall is just about here. Yeah. And people are thinking ahead to their winter and spring trips. They're thinking ahead to next summer for Kamchatka and Alaska. Now that those bookings are open for next year. Yeah. Don't wait. If you're thinking you want to go on a trip, let's get the process started now. Because you know what that does? That enables us to get you all of the best of everything. The best guides, the best rooms, the best transfers. All of those things. Uh, so what I do want to do is, is just give a quick shout out to the Yellow Dog um, processes right here. If you don't follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, do so now. Because we put tons of news out there. New destinations, new offerings, specials, last minute deals. Mm -hmm. We've got a great newsletter. Check this out. It's called The Backstage Pass. And all this deals with are specials, last minute deals and trips that may have just become available at a radically reduced price. So if you don't subscribe to the Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Backstage Pass and you're someone that cares about this stuff, do yourself a favor, uh, tune into that, subscribe to the Backstage Pass. We've also got what's called um, our insider list. So let's say you're thinking about a trip to New Zealand or a trip to the Seychelles or a trip to Kamchatka. You can specifically log on to information on those insider lists about those destinations. Mm -hmm. We can keep in touch with you without burying you with you know destination information for things that may not interest you. We yeah. can focus on exactly what you want. We'll customize the information for you. Check us out on social media. Visit our website. Visit our social media sites on Facebook and Instagram. Let us keep in touch with you. And more importantly, let us take care of you the next time you're ready to go fishing. So yeah. that's, uh, that's what we do at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. If you haven't uh, worked with us in the past, we'd love a chance to work with you. I can promise you we're going to take great care of you. I have an amazing team, and we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, let's get back to glasses okay. and, and lens technology. Well, I do want to say one thing about those last-minute trips. You know, This time of year in Alaska, when I worked up there, and this is going to lead into a, a story here, it's great. That end of the season, it's just great fishing. You know, you have the, the, the big, rainbows. big rainbows, there's <laughs> yeah. salmon ha are starting to uh, really decompose, and you're, you're fishing those flesh patterns. Those big rainbows have been eaten heavy, you know, all year long. Uh, don't wait till the last minute to book it, but that, that's a great time of year. Uh, when I worked up on the Nushigak for, uh, for Camille's dad, uh, many moons ago, out in front of camp, uh, you know, we used to uh, take some of our food scraps and we'd throw it out there and the rainbows would eat it. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if that was the best fish food for them, but boy, they grew big. And we would have the same, I think it was the same fish every year would come back. And we didn't allow anyone, no, none of the guides, nobody was allowed to fish out in front of camp, except for Camille. No. Uh, Camille, I don't even know if you were in kindergarten yet. And I was you would, little. You were little. I was little. I'm surprised I didn't go swimming with those things. That's right. I'm surprised I didn't pull you in. Yeah. But she would come out to camp, and uh, all the guys, we just loved her. And uh, we, we couldn't wait to see who was going to be the one to help her catch one of these giant 10-plus pound rainbows right in front of camp and hoop and holler. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, those were some really good times. Oh, so, gosh, great memories. Yeah. So she's been uh, spoiled with good fish her whole life, just letting you know. <laughs> been great, been pretty fortunate. But Pete also, and Jim, oh my gosh, travel all over the globe, get to fish some incredible fisheries. And, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Don't, don't wait on it. I mean, I'm still, uh, you know, regretful of, of trips I've passed up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing beats a good destination trip. Um, you know, it, it's just you're in a different world for a week, and uh, – as, mo as wonderful as it is to talk to everyone on Facebook, sometimes it's nice not to have cell phone coverage. Oh, yeah. Just That's get right. off the grid. That's right. Yeah. All right. So a couple more questions that have come in, a couple more comments. Uh, yeah. Brett Hall says, you know, thanks for bringing up uh, frames and the fit because they're, for a lot of people, just as important as the lenses, making sure you have that right fit. And Absolutely. that is, as you were saying, Camille, you know, you go down where it's hot and humid, um, you know, fogging up or too much light coming in the sides, that frame fit is super important. And there's one, there's one product that uh, I didn't talk about, but I will right now. Um, this is called our OmniFit. So we've taken some of our best frames, like this is the Tuna Alley, and uh, what we've done is we've 
Uh, we've kind of retrofitted it with a nose pad uh, that's bendable and adjustable. And this is for folks that have a hard time fitting sunglasses. Um, you know, a lot of folks with, uh, you know, uh, Eastern Asian facial structures or Latin facial, facial structures have a really tough time with fit. Uh, we have so many fans out there that we identified that we made this product for them. It keeps those sunglasses a little further away from their face, so they're able to um, get that full wrap but not seal. Uh, so many of them, uh, you know, the, the sunglass was sealing, and uh, then they fog up, um, and then they, you know, they, they weren't finding that product anywhere in the marketplace that would help them. So we came up with that OmniFit. Uh, check that out if you have a, a tough time fitting in sunglasses. That's right. That's a great point. That's a great point. So one of the things, and we want to talk a little bit more about Costa and what Costa does for the industry. And uh, as we said early on um, in this program, we're, we're huge fans of Costa at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. We've had this great relationship with Costa as a company, mm -hmm. I, I mean, really since we started 18 years ago. And you guys have supported us on so many levels. Um, one of the ways that, that you've supported um, the things that we do is, is through a company we have called Confluence Films. And Absolutely. We've made, uh, movies, destination focuses all over the world. Camille was the star of the last one called Providence that uh, that uh, Confluence came out with last year. Mm -hmm. um, you guys, as a company, do a lot to support independent filmmakers. Absolutely, in the fly Absolutely. fishing and the fishing world. It's it's super important to us. Um, you know, not only Confluence Films but also the Fly Fishing Film Tour that comes to 160 cities. Uh, you know, and, and all of those filmmakers. Um, you know, for a lot from the very beginning. Uh, we were the presenting sponsors. Still of the, are. You're, still you're the are. number one sponsor we're of the, the film number tour. Number one sponsor That's of the right. film tour. Um, and you know, I think the reason that we find that so important is that fly fishing, is special, uh, especially, it's it's about the experience. We're not bringing home money for the number, the, the poundage of our bass. We're not bringing home ever coolers of fish. Uh, what we're doing is we're having great experiences with friends, and we wanted to showcase that to to let people know that you know maybe this is. How you want to interact with nature, uh, you know, and it's just it's it's been such a great experience over the years, uh, you know, for me personally as well. I know as for our company, um, and I, I think it's just it's such a great community building. You know, when people come together uh, to to you know watch the Confluence films or to the F3T, uh, it's really everyone coming out of the woodwork to see old friends to celebrate the sport, maybe tip a few back, uh, and get excited. Just a few. Just a few. And get excited about a place maybe that they've always wanted to go and think about it and dream about it. And uh, sometimes you get to go to those places, you know. I mean, I can think of a few places that I've been able to go to that never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be in the middle of Guyana chasing a giant dinosaur in Arapaima. That was a really special time for me. I became, like, passionate about that when I watched Costa's film Jungle Fish, mm -hmm. um, which chronicled... Uh, you know, finding this village that really wanted to um, create a new way of life for the 300 villagers. Um, at the time, most of the men were leaving to do extractive industry. They were cutting down, you know, they were cutting down trees. They were in gold mine. They had trapped all the animals around the village. The village elders had got together and said, we can't do this. This is not sustainable. This is not the jungle that we want to live in. And I mean, they're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, dirt strip to boat to <laughs> middle of nowhere, Jaguar Central, Python Central, Piranha Central. Um, but uh, these people really wanted to make a difference for, for their kids. And what they did is they decided, hey, we're going to put an eco lodge together. So we sort of helped them with that. And they were having a tough time finding people to come and bird watch and whatnot. So um, we chronicled trying to catch this giant arapaima. Not only did we figure out how to catch it on a fly rod, uh, we also figured out how to protect it um, in Guyana because of the work that Indy Flying Costa and Rewa have been doing. The only place that you can fish is for Arapaima legally in Guyana is there at the Rewa Eco Lodge and it's all catch and release with flies. So that means the whole country is catch and release fly fishing for Arapaima, which are an ancient, ancient fish. Uh, and extremely cool and I think one of the great things about it is every time you catch a fish it's a science team there yeah. they're finding out about that was it a really cool aspect of mm -hmm. it yeah it's yeah, amazing yeah. And, and you know Camille and I have both been fortunate enough to go down and do that trip mm -hmm. um, that trip started from a filmmaking project 
that Costa backed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yellow Dog Ambassador Oliver White was in on that original Absolutely. production. Uh, Costa's been phenomenal about uh, working with filmmakers to tell the story of Fly yeah. Fish Again. And, and you were instrumental in that whole deal. As a matter of fact, the village was so appreciative of Pete Vandergriff's efforts down there <laughs> that they gave you the nickname Arapaima Pete. <laughs> And I, I know, I know that, and there's rumor here, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we don't know, maybe Raluca can, can weigh in on this, uh, there's rumor that, he, that Pete has a, a three-foot Arapaima tattoo on his back. Yeah. We don't know, well, we're not going to ask him to take his shirt would, off. Oh, okay. No, no, okay. this is a family show, so <laughs> okay. we're going to do that. But uh, anyway, great work on, on Costa's part for, for uh, you know, independent film projects. Yeah. The other thing that we love about Costa, um, and, and it very much shares our values at Yellow Dog, um, is your conservation ethos um, from the Indie Fly project to you know working with indigenous communities to really um, help develop sport fishing as a sustainable economic driver for those communities mm -hmm. to the Kick Plastic campaign, which you guys right. have been instrumental on, and right. you know that's it's one of the things yeah. you're seeing. I say you're not seeing any plastic here. We are right. Are, right. are disciples and firm believers in that, and, and you guys have, have really led the efforts on that Kick Plastic campaign. Well, I tell you, I mean, it's something that uh, you know we embraced uh, as a company, and it's just it's really been thrilling to be part of that. And uh, what we're trying to do in the fly fishing community, because you know we're we're conscientious enough in the fly fishing community to, to get this done, is you know on a guide trip or if you're you know going out fishing for yourself, don't bring that plastic water bottle. You don't need it. Bring a metal one. Refill it. So we launched a Kick Plastic uh, Guide Captains and Lodge program, and there's a website, kickplastic.org. You can find out more information. Uh, but, you know, not only is it, uh, you know, um, economic for a, a guide or a lodge to do that, it's the right thing to do. And we hope that in a decade that you'll get into a boat anywhere on the planet to go fly fishing, and they'll either hand you a metal bottle or you'll, better yet, take one with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I challenge you, do the 30-day challenge. Get a metal water bottle, I'm sure everybody's got one, and just not use a plastic water bottle for one month. And you'll see it's doable, um, it's difficult, but if you think about it, it helps you pre-plan for going out. You know, my whole family, we all have our water bottles. Before we leave the house, everybody got their water bottle, then out we go. Yeah, so. yeah and they'll, I promise you, they'll keep your water a lot colder than a plastic one will. Absolutely. That's the right thing to do. That's the right thing I mean, do. if you travel the world and you go to the most remote, off-the-grid, pristine places, you're walking a beach, you literally feel like you're the first person that's ever set yeah. foot in these places, and you look down and you see the detritus of, you know, the, yeah. the ocean plastic water bottles and, yeah. and, you know, cigarette lighters and flip-flops, and you're thinking, you know, every single ounce of plastic that's ever been created by man is still there somewhere it's somewhere, somewhere. it's yeah. still there yeah and it could be in a landfill it could be on a beach somewhere but it's, it hasn't gone anywhere absolutely and you know um you know w as we've looked into this and really gotten involved in it you know everyone says ah you know um i live in the mountains you know i'm not creating that well what we found out is 80 percent of that waterborne trash has come from rivers so it's coming from inland out so everyone's affecting this and uh you know, I just think it's something that we, we need to do better. Yeah, so. yeah, it's our responsibility to do better. Mm -hmm. That's right. So thanks for uh, starting the Kick Plastic campaign and Absolutely. being a leader on that. I know the industry appreciates it. Well, I tell you, and you know, it's been great to see uh, APTA pick that up and offer right. fly shops. Uh, American Fly Fishing Trade Association, mm -hmm. the uh, industry trade association that is the voice of, of the business of fly fishing. They yep. embraced it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, they're, the little cups that uh, you get your flies in, you know, I mean, millions of those are used every year, and a lot of them are thrown away. And uh, so they came up with a paper alternative, so a little kind of cardboard box instead. And it's gonna, it's cool. gonna, yeah, it's a really cool idea. It's really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we've got uh, a lot of great comments that are continuing to come in. Uh, Dino Williams says, "Get some Costas, you'll see the difference. Save the cheap shades for when you take your brother-in-law fishing." I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, Dino. That's and, right. Ah, uh, geez, uh, so many people. We we don't have. Uh, the ability to deal with everything, but Steve Tatterchuk, Dino Williams, we've got Brett Hall, Chris Carlton, uh, uh, weighing in from Fort Worth, Bryce Tedford, Dustin Hahn, uh, Kyle Perkins, uh, you know Billy Wilkerson, who won himself a backpack a little while ago, Justin Price, Scott Curry, 
uh, Aaron, Brock Harrison, Brett Sumter, thank you guys for your comments. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We've got uh, Robert Rubino who sent one in earlier. He actually wanted to know if Elton John's sunglass styles come in a polarized <laughs> version. I think that's a great question. It's a great uh, question. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, we've, we've had a lot of questions that, that came in earlier asking about the best colors for the flats or what they want to wear when they're bass fishing, mm -hmm. uh, questions about fits, questions about low light, a lot of questions about the best low light lenses. Absolutely. We've talked about that, mm -hmm. the Sunrise Silver Mirror. Right here, Sunrise Silver Mirror. Sunrise Silver Mirror. Best so, in show at uh, iCast right there, so which is the big industry show mm -hmm. where they look at all of the new products. So. Um, you know, we're happy with that. That's right. Rusted Yuka sent a uh, Instagram uh, post in asking for low light and foggy days. There it is right there. There you have it. Um, so many people have uh, have sent in questions asking wow. about, you know. Look at that list. It just, just goes on it's, and it's on. Hundreds, and on. hundreds right. of questions yeah. about, uh, about lens technology, lens colors coming in from Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. and through email. So we, yeah. we really appreciate it. It's complex. Lens technology is complex. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff out there, uh, coastadelmar.com uh, to check out. Um, you know, if you're, if you're a fly fisherman and you're on Instagram, you know, come follow us at, at Coast of Fly Fishing where we get into the specifics and, and, you know, Jim and the Yellow Dog team, you know, often share some just wonderful photography from, uh, uh, to make us all jealous uh, from traveling around the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best, yes, yeah, for yes. sure. We love it. For sure. So, uh, We've given away a few things. We gave uh, Greg Lyles a pair of sunglasses earlier. He uh, weighed in on a Facebook comment and then turned right around, came back to us, said, give it to someone in Houston who's helping out down there. So, so great. Greg, yeah, thanks for so that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Rick, Rick Bates, uh, you were uh, worried your wife didn't want to spend that much money on Costa as well. You're okay. You just won yourself a pair of Costas a little while ago. So mm -hmm. thanks for tuning in on that. Billy Wilkinson got himself a new Costa pack. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we got a couple of hats here. We should we probably, got a couple of hats. We should probably give those away. Here's a flat bill. Uh, Yako loves this hat. He wears this thing all the time. It's the Yako Lucas special. Another <laughs> Yellow Dog ambassador right that's there. Right, that's right. That doesn't uh, surprise me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, if you're a flat brill, uh, flat brimmed person, let us know. Maybe that's uh, your look. And then we got, uh, you know. Uh, more classic look, and then we have our stealth hat. If you can't see that, that's a tarpon on there. Uh, what I like about this hat, it's really cool. Um, as you wear it, uh, it it'll kind of fade out, except for the, the stitching of the fish. So the fish becomes more prevalent the longer you use it. It's a really cool look. So how many of these do we have? Uh, we got we have three. Three hats. Yep. All right, here's what we're going to do. Next three people that post on Facebook Live right now, you don't even have to say, just, you know, just say hat. You're going to win one of these hats. There you go. Send us your name, hat, as they pop in, you're going to get yourself a Costa hat. So really? that's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're happy to do that. So let's talk a little bit about the year ahead. Uh, what does Costa have coming down the pipe? What's oh, next man. for Costa? What's exciting that's going on? What can we look forward to? Well, I tell you what, I've seen some uh, technology that we have that uh, I've been sworn to secrecy. And, uh, you know, who's going to hear it on Facebook, though? No one, you know. Nobody that, watches. No, but, yeah, no, no one's yeah. on face. Oh wait, no, this is the the, uh, the most popular uh, medium in the world. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I can't let let out too much except keep your eyes peeled. We are doing sunrise silver marine glass. I do know that. I've seen some of our new frames, really killer. We're working on some some great technology that they would kill me if I let it out. But uh, eclipse glasses. <laughs> oh wait, we don't need those. Oh, we don't need those anymore. Oh, that's right. That's right. So uh, yeah, I hope everyone watched the eclipse through glasses. Save your eyes right there. Uh, but that someone was forgot cool. to tell the president. That's right. Uh, I, I, saw, yeah, yeah, I think anyway. I see that. I saw that. I did get a uh, on at Costa Fly Fishing. I had a few people reach out to me and say, "Well, Costas work for this," and I'm like. I don't know. <laughs> They're I'm gonna say damn no. Good, but yeah. I'm gonna say no. Uh, but uh, well, yeah. Well, I tell you what. You know, it was. Uh, it was wonderful to uh, to spend some time with you guys. Yeah, for sure. absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we got some great. more more questions. I'm happy to talk about. You know, our uh, one of the things I really think when when it comes down to it, that's a differentiator between uh, you know good companies and great companies are, are their commitment to the resource, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things I'm most proud of that Costa does. Uh, we work heavily with so many partners, uh, including Trout Unlimited, Bonefish Tarpon Trust, CCA, IGFA. Um, TRCP, you know, we're going to help out maybe with the uh, uh, the Yellow Dog, what is it, YCCF. The Yellow Dog Community and Conservation Foundation. Yeah, YCCF. 
I got it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Why yeah. DCCF? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the things that you're doing yeah. um, are things like what we uh, do with IndieFly, what COSA does with IndieFly, which is help indigenous people, help people that uh, maybe need something in their community, mm -hmm. whether it's computers at schools sure. or, uh, you know, maybe they need something, you know, a, a, a garden, maybe they need some rebuilding. Um, who knows? T tell us what you're doing. Cause, you know. Absolutely. And before I do that, I just got to say, I, I put it out there, Tony Treadway, Dino Williams, and Thomas Albury. You guys all just got yourself a hat. All so right. Tony Treadway, Dino Williams, Thomas Albury, shoot us your contact information. We'll throw one of those in the mail, maybe some other swag and stickers and stuff like that as well, for sure. Um, as far as things that are kind of coming down the pipe for Yellow Dog and what we have going on, uh, things are busy. As we talked about earlier, um, you know, this is the time to book your trip, whether it's for a saltwater trip in the near future. Um, do it now. Uh, help us help you get the best guides mm -hmm. set you up for success. Don't wait. Uh, give us a call and, and we'll start working with you on that. Um, you know, we've got the new Yellow Dog Community and Conservation Foundation, which we're very excited about. We started this last year. And where we work around the world, we work with about 190 different lodges in 26 different countries. And most of the lodges are located in small communities, mm -hmm. off the grid locales. Mm -hmm. um, we go down, we spend time at all of these places because we don't sell something if we don't know it. If we haven't been there, if we don't go there on a regular basis, we don't book it, we don't pretend to know it. We have to have been there, we have to go there. So we go to these places and we see these small communities that oftentimes need support. And it might be in the form of conservation or enforcement, for example, we're doing a ton in southern Belize right now to help with the gillnet ban down there right, to, right. to not just enforce it in the marine reserves, but to try to get it passed into a national law in Belize. And I think you know we're making good, good progress down That's there right. with yeah. the great partners we have on site. Mm -hmm. um, conservation enforcement, it's big. Education, whether it is projects we've done in local schools, for instance, Punta Allen, we helped rebuild all the bathrooms in the schools. You know, and, and, and you know, people say, what does that have to do with fishing? Well, say you're a client, you go to Punta Allen, you're fishing with your guide. Guess what? It's a guide community. All the guide's children go to school there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we can go down and do something for the kids of these guides, do something for the community, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the other big issues for us, aside from education and conservation enforcement, are access issues. And right. we are very big about that, especially in the Western U.S. We are oh, passionate so about important. access, and mm -hmm. it's something we will always speak out for and, and, and fight for. So yeah. Yellow Dog Community Conservation Foundation was put together to put money and channel money into these grassroots projects. And the neat thing is that when you book a trip with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures, a portion of the majority of the trips that are booked, we take a portion of that from our end, not an add-on cost to anything that you're doing and booking your trip from our end, we take a piece of the profits from that trip, we donate it to the foundation in your name. Now here's what's really cool about that. About half the lodges we work with have already signed on board in what's called the Matching Funds Program. They're matching that donation. That's great. So let's incredible. say you're headed down to a so lodge incredible. in Belize or Alaska or Argentina or all of these different places where we have lodges participating in that. Money's being donated in your name to this foundation that's going back to do positive work in the places you as anglers care about. Yeah. You know, these are the places we go to fish. You know, I've got young kids, you've got young kids. Mm -hmm. Camille, not quite yet, but who knows? <laughs> but you know what, I wanna take my kids to a lot of my favorite places mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30 years from now and have them great. And that's what the Yellow Dog Community and Conservation Foundation yeah. is working on right now. So that's, that's exciting. We've got a lot of new destinations. Super excited about this past year adding Guyana and the Arapaima fishing Absolutely. Uh, into the into the lineup. We've got some new stuff in Kamchatka. We've expanded mm -hmm. our offerings up there. Big time. Big time. We've got three new operations in the Yucatan that we're uh, just about to bring online. Uh, new stuff in Belize, new stuff in South America, uh, another operation in the Seychelles, more stuff in Cuba. So we are having a big, busy year at Yellow Dog. That's um, great. What I will tell you this as, as we're kind of wrapping things up, uh, if you don't follow us on social media, please do so. Facebook, Instagram, sign up for our newsletter, sign up for that backstage pass. If you're someone that likes deals and can go at the last minute and save a bunch of money, you want to be subscribing to that, that backstage pass newsletter that we put out. Make sure that you follow the insider lists that we have if you are interested in a specific destination. Keep in touch with us. Let us keep in touch with you. Sign up for a mailing list. We will send you our annual travel guide and catalog. And, uh, and we'll stay in touch with you. If you haven't booked a trip with us before, 
give us a call. We'd love the chance to work with you and take care of you. If you have booked a trip with us before, thanks for your business. We look forward to working with you again and taking care of you again. Um, with that, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank Camille Egdorf, who uh, is with us thank at Yellow you. Dog, for being here today. Long time Costa pro and Costa supporter. And, yeah, absolutely. Thank and you most importantly, me. we got to thank Pete yes. uh, Vandergrift, Arapaima Pete, live in, Pete. in Bozeman. That's right. And, well, uh, you know, don't forget your sunglasses when you go out to all these uh, exotic uh, locations. I do want to talk about the Arapaima Pete. <laughs> Because he is, is wrong on this. I want to tell the story so everyone knows it, so no one needs to call There's me. There's no back pie. tattoo? There's no back tattoo. What happened is we're, we're going down. This is my, my first time in Guyana, my first time fishing for Arapaima, and uh, I'm using uh, uh, one of the guides down there, his setups, uh, Matt Brewer, uh, some wonderful Nautilus reels there, and uh, they had an Arapaima etched in them. And... Uh, you know, uh, Whitney, a close friend of Yellow Dog, was down there as well, trying to catch the Maripaima. And we're walking down to the boat the first day, and she <laughs> looks over at me. She goes, man, you got to be pretty good at this. you got the Maripaima on your reel. And I kind of, uh, you know, I played it up a little bit, but the reality is it wasn't my gear. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that vain to think I'll put it, you know, put that species before I've even caught it. Um, so no back tattoo. Um, and. I've moved on from But the nickname is sweet, yeah. and he yeah. will forevermore be known as Arapaima Pete. I might. I might. Yeah. Yeah. That's stuck. Yeah. So that's yeah. perfect. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. Um, we're going to be bringing you a lot more of these Facebook Live conversations from Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures. The nice thing about being a Bozeman, a lot of people come through. We always like to sit them down here in the uh, the outdoor studio and, uh, and ask that's them sweet. questions and talk about fun stuff, talk about great places, great equipment and gear. And, uh, and great people. So mm -hmm. thanks for paying attention. Thanks for tuning in. We'll keep in touch with you and uh, enjoy the last few days of the summer season.